XRP has come under attack from a new set of regulations. Buterin didn't take long to use this as an opportunity to take a jab at XRP holders, while his own Ethereum gets great news on the same news that was bad for XRP. And we have yet another firm out there that is under investigation by the police. Let's leave this screen and go into this one. Another Singapore crypto firm is in trouble. Yes, everyone, this one is called Holdelnot. Holdelnot has already let go 80% of its workforce in order to lower its costs. The key here, though, is the customers that are affected by this. Now, there is a little hidden detail here at the bottom of the article, and I'm going to share it with you. Holdelnot said it did not have any secured creditors. Yep, that means it's all unsecured creditors, all retail level buyers. Now, businesses with unsecured loans could also be included here. But if you are a business with an unsecured loan, shame on you. You should know better. Another firm, Halting Withdrawals, now investigated by the police, and this one has only retail exposure. Holdenut said it would provide an update on Tuesday, and I will be sure to share that with you because we are seeing a precedent being set among Singaporean authorities in how they are tackling these crypto exchanges. They are going after them, raiding these facilities, confiscating items, a way more aggressive approach than we are seeing in the United States. But now we got to talk about Mr. Buterin pissing on XRP holders. This one actually has me fairly pissed off. And what has me pissed off is the story behind it. Ripple's biggest critic makes a U-turn, calls out the SEC's overreach. I don't care about any of that. I care about this. Ripple not without protection. As reported by you today, Ethereum creator Vitalik Buterin once again riled up the XR community by saying that XRP had lost its protection. Buterin referring to the argument presented Presented by Ripple in its ongoing legal battle with the SEC that XRP should not be classified as a security since Ethereum and Bitcoin are similar. Now, to connect the dots with what Buterin is talking about, we have to look at this story. Recently, a $30,000 Canadian limit was placed on altcoin purchases, which excluded Ethereum. So Buterin's sitting here going, guess what? Since we were excluded, we're obviously different than you, XRP. So guess what, XRP? You must be a security because in Canada, you weren't included with us. And we've already seen within the United States that the SEC is going hard after XRP, even though the case looks like the SEC is losing and they're dragging their feet. But the article continues, Buterin's show of support to the ETH community pushing against regulations that privilege Ethereum over other legitimate cryptocurrencies. There were only four cryptocurrencies that had zero regulations like that, purchase limit regulations in Canada. I will have that story linked at the end of this video as well as the description below. That video goes into detail on how absurd these regulations are. And the worst part is it essentially eliminates whale capability and accumulation of XRP by the retail market. The four cryptos that have been given carte blanche. No more money in the budget. What? I thought we had Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett? Yeah, I thought we had Kate Blanchett with the budget. You mean carte blanche? Which are Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin. The rest of the cryptos will be limited to a $30,000 annually cumulative purchase rate. The big problem here, and you know what? Let's go big screen. It here is why Buterin is a hypocritical scumbag and why most XRP holders can't stand the thought or sound of Ethereum. So we're going to tie a couple concepts here together and you're going to see just how disgusting this actually is. All right. So in Canada right now, there are four cryptocurrencies out there that have zero regulations. You could buy as much as you want. But on the altcoins, XRP, XLM included, there's a $30,000 a year limit. Now, this limit is combined, right? So if you buy 25,000 XRP, you only got $5,000 left to buy any other altcoin out there. So Ethereum is sitting there going, hey, we must be different because there are are no limits placed on us. So now you have two countries in effect going after XRP holders and Buterin's out there going, oh, look, 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 the government's telling us that we're obviously different. See, look, there's no limits for Ethereum, but there is for XRP and all the other altcoins. Buterin and Ethereum also go out there and saying, hey, guess what? The SEC isn't going after us. In fact, they've even said publicly, oh, we're a commodity. So Buterin is letting the governments decide the outcome of this battle. And here is why he is a 
hypocritical piece of shit. Buterin defends tornado cash and uses cases amid U.S. sanctions. So here, Buterin is upset that the government is making the regulations and taking over things because it's affecting him personally. But in the case of XRP, Ethereum, buying limits and whether it's a security or a commodity, Buterin is like, hey, I like hearing what the government has to say. I love the idea that government is regulating this. But wait a minute, on the tornado cash side, you're saying, hey, the government shouldn't play any part of this. Buterin, who represents Ethereum, has pissed off a lot of XRP holders, including myself. Just because two governments out there with overreach are siding with you doesn't mean that you are superior. It just means that those government bodies are picking winners and losers. And the hypocrisy between Buterin going, hey, you know what? Government stay out of tornado cash, but hey, government, yeah, cool, you're you're limiting XRP and other altcoin purchases, but you're not limiting us. Hypocrisy, total scum bag and the crypto contagion is still spreading. Singaporean authorities investigating another firm out there. As news breaks regarding any of these stories, I will keep you updated. And to reward the viewers that stuck around to the end, my unfiltered thoughts on this. All right, so this one really does have me pretty pissed. Why is Ethereum and Bitcoin getting such preferential treatment over the rest of the cryptos out there. We still don't know who the actual creators of Bitcoin are. So for governments to give them, yes, the Kate Blanchett, that is total crap. How can the governments justify giving a total unsecured entity, right? We have no idea the source origin. We have no idea who owns the majority of it. Governments are essentially empowering an unknown entity to have extreme value, extreme worth. And they're okay with that. But they're like, hey, you know what, if you want to buy $31,000 worth of XRP, XLM, uh-uh, you're stuck with 30,000. Now, yeah, I know, I get it. There's ways to get around it, VPNs, anonymizers, and stuff like that. But it's the idea of the legal overreach from these governments. Because yes, I get it. Anytime there is a law that is passed, we will find ways to skirt around it and get what we want. Government's telling you what you can spend your money on. Think about it. They have no problem with you going to a strip club, right? Making it rain with the hundos and dropping 35,000, only to come back the next morning, rally it and party again and drop another 40k on them girls. See, the government has no issue with that. They also have no issue with you going to Vegas and losing a million dollars within moments. Yeah, see, the government does not care. But oh, if you want to buy $31,000 in altcoins, no, 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 we are going to protect you. Yep, we're going to protect you. But hey, if you want to buy that $250,000 nasty ride and have it depreciate 95% over the next seven years, we're cool with that too. But don't you dare buy a dollar more than 30,000 of altcoins because we don't want you losing your money. But yo, go to the strip clubs, go to the casinos, go to the racetracks, do all sorts of other stupid crap that there are no financial limits capped on. We're okay with that. But the government is totally okay, though, with Bitcoin going, you know what? We're going to grant someone some extreme value. In fact, we're going to funnel all transactions through those four coins. So in Canada, whale activity for altcoins has pretty much been minimized, right? You still have some states that are allowed to purchase heavy. The other thing that really bugs me about this is seeing how many of these high-level people in the crypto space are just complete scumbags. I've been covering the whole Alex Mashinsky Celsius thing for a long time now. In this egotistical punk took direct control of the company's finances over the last several months and crashed it into the ground. You have Buterin over here who's like, yo, government, oh, I'm, I'm cool with you with this, but no, I'm upset with you with that. You're seeing the character of these people come to light as we get more and more news stories, more and more data on these people of how they really, really are. They are just all greedy, money-hungry people, which brings me now into the whole idea of the Singaporean raids, right, on all of these crypto exchanges. Again, the greed there, right? The, the scamming, the nastiness, the horrible mismanagement of funds, the unsustainable yields. The crypto space is filled with a bunch of dirty characters out there. And this story here is just yet another example of greed overpowering everything else. Buterin, 
crypto exchanges that are shady, that have bad business practices. The crypto space is a mess, but there are a few good actors out there. So thank you for sticking to the end. Those were my unfiltered thoughts. I will see you in the next video.